Welcome to the PAS Report Weekly Roundup Podcast. The PAS Report provides an honest analysis on the critical issues that matter to you without the biased media filters. Here's your host, Professor Nicholas Giordano. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the PAS Report Podcast. This is your host, Nick Giordano. And as always, make sure to follow and subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. Visit the PAS Report website, PASReport.com. And share this episode with family and friends and on social media. Now, getting to today, I could tell you the the American political landscape hasn't changed entirely. We are facing uh, challenges that we never thought possible. And it's not just on the everyday issues. It's our entire way of life. The American identity itself is being challenged. And many of you are dissatisfied. You're dissatisfied with the current state of America. Many of you are wondering... What the hell is happening out there? You're struggling to figure it all out. You're struggling to make ends meet. You know, under the Biden economy, Bidenomics has wreaked havoc on your personal economy, making you have to juggle and figure out what bills you could afford to pay and which ones you can't. You're having to make significant sacrifices as inflation continues to run rampant. They say inflation is at 7 or 8%. But if you look at food and energy costs, the necessities in life that we need every single day, It's a hell of a lot higher than 7 or 8%. But I don't have to tell you that, right? Because you feel it. You feel it every time you go to the gas pump to fill up your car. You feel it every month when you get your electric bill. You feel it every time you go to a grocery store. And it's not just with the economy. You look at the education system. The education system is a disaster. Student proficiency levels are at all-time lows. We continue to drop in the worldwide rankings. And rather than fix that, what are officials doing? Well, they're pushing an ideological agenda on children, manipulating their minds. It's about indoctrination. They want to brainwash the next generation in order to achieve political dominance. And I'll explain that more later. But let's not pretend it's about education. They've abandoned education long ago. They abandoned it when they began to drop standards and dumb down America and our children. When you look at our health care system, it seems like it's collapsing too, right? Has anyone noticed that appointments are getting really difficult at doctor's offices? And what I mean by that is just to get a routine physical, they don't have openings for like a month or two. I used to be able to call my doctor's office and my kid's doctor's office and get an appointment within a week or two. Now they tell me the next opening is over a month away. What's going on there? Is anyone looking into it? When you look at the urban centers, they continue to be riddled with crime. You see random violence, and that's the most frightening aspect to it, that it is so random. You could be minding your own business, walking down the block, and next thing you know, some psycho runs up to you and hits you in the head with a hammer. You have stores that have to lock everything up, lock up all the items because they're tired of the shoplifters. And then you have businesses that are so fed up with it, they're just closing up shops saying it's not even worth it anymore. And who suffers in these areas? Well, it's the people that suffer in these areas because now they have less grocery stores, less convenience stores. Less everything. And the people in those communities now have to travel farther, even though they may not have the means to do that. So it's the ordinary people suffering, not not the officials, not the elite officials, because they're insulated, right? They don't even live in the communities that they serve. You look at the surge in homelessness, people living on the streets of America, building 10 cities, shooting up right out in the open, defecating on the sidewalk. And you see it's bleeding out into the suburbs. How many of you that live on Long Island, where I live, have noticed people begging for money at the off-ramps of the Long Island Expressway or Sunrise Highway, the northern or southern state? I mean, this is a new phenomenon, and it's only getting worse. We've never seen this before, and now it's bleeding out into the suburbs. When you look at the border, it's a complete disaster. I don't have to tell you that. This administration basically eliminated the border. We don't have a border. And they, they don't want to enforce the current immigration laws. Instead, they created an open border policy. And states and municipalities are the ones that have to deal with the consequences. But it's not just the states and the municipalities. It, it's areas that were already struggling. Communities where the infrastructure was already pushed to the brink. Education systems already collapsed. Communities that were already struggling with crime. And, and so our entire immigration system has collapsed. And it's taken a toll on the already struggling communities. Why not put these people up in the wealthy elite areas? I mean, you know, remember when they were sent to Martha's Vineyard and they listed a whopping 24 hours there? It really tells you everything you need to know. When it comes to our infrastructure, our infrastructure is crumbling. If you look at the Army Corps of Engineers report, the infrastructure report, you're going to see a lot of C's and D's and F's in there. You know, the Democrats, they, they ran through this $1 trillion plus infrastructure package that some Republicans supported. 
And the administration finally admitted that it wasn't really about infrastructure. It was about climate change and equity. When are we going to wake up to that? On the international front, it's not much better, right? In fact, it's another disaster. The world is far more unstable today than it was just a couple of years ago. China is far more powerful today than it was. We're sending billions of dollars in money and military equipment to Ukraine while Americans are struggling. Even worse, there are no clear objectives, no strategy or vision. In fact, you have numerous officials behind the scenes, including General Milley, who I am not a fan of, I've criticized him many times on this podcast, saying that Ukraine can't win, yet we're still sending over the billions of dollars. Why are we continuing to do that? Why aren't we trying to negotiate an end to the conflict? Oh, that's right. We have to continue to fund the military industrial complex and all the failed consultants, all the failed foreign policy experts over the last 40 years. And then you have the Biden administration handing out a paltry $700 to people impacted by the Maui fires. So we could transfer billions without hesitation. And how much money of that money is lining the pockets of corrupt officials? But when it comes to Americans that are really struggling, well, then we can't help. We wash our hands with them. You have countries around the world aligning with each other in order to take down the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. Tensions heating up all over the place. But let's not forget... As they said, as the media told us when Biden was inaugurated, the adults are back in charge, right? The same failed foreign policy officials that continue to weaken the United States, they're the ones back in charge. So the, at least the adults are back in charge. Amazing. And, and look at Afghanistan. Look at Afghanistan. The Taliban, is, we're about to approach the, the 22nd anniversary of 9-11. And every American should be aware that the Taliban is better armed and equipped today than it was in 2001. Not only did we leave billions of dollars in military equipment behind, we also abandoned Bagram Air Base. We built that, 100 million taxpayer dollars. And the base, guess who now occupies the base? Well, it's China. And China's there to exploit the lithium fields that Afghanistan has to enrich themselves. Amazing. You look at it, and these lithium fields are going to be used to make batteries in China that we're then going to purchase to enrich China even further because of Biden's green energy initiatives, where they want to force everyone to buy vehicles, electric vehicles that they don't want. Truly stunning. They, they destroyed our energy infrastructure, right? I mean, we finally gained independence. We became an oil exporter. Well, that's all gone. Now we have to go to countries like Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. Enriching them, begging them to produce more oil. And it's not going so well. If you notice the price of gas, which I know you have. Then you have all these idiots screaming about threats to democracy. Yet they're the ones that are undermining the Constitution at every step of the way. They're the ones undermining democratic principles that have been infused in the system. They have weaponized nearly every single institution for political purposes. And they don't even pretend to hide their intent. It's right out in the open for everyone to see. And I guess, you know, why would they hide their intent? They don't have to because nobody is ever held accountable. Nobody. And despite all these failures, though, Republicans should be extremely worried because I'm seeing a bunch of red flags out there. It, it, it's a disaster right now, and Republicans can't even capitalize on it. And I'm going to explain that when we get back from this quick break. PAS Report listeners, hurricane season is almost here, and the time to prepare is right now, not when the hurricane hits. When Hurricane Ida hit the Gulf Coast, it destroyed countless homes and left many without access to food and clean water. Millions lost power, some for weeks. The floods that followed the hurricane washed out roads, made it impossible for grocery stores to restock their shelves. Families were desperate. They were waiting for help that was slow to arrive. But what if you didn't have to rely on FEMA to provide for your family during a crisis? The answer is simple. Be prepared with emergency food kits from 4Patriots. Their long-lasting and delicious food options are specifically designed to provide you and your loved ones with the sustenance you need when you need it most. And these food kits are hand-packed in the USA, last up to 25 years, compact inside covert storage totes, include a wide variety of delicious breakfasts, lunches, and dinners, and they're backed by thousands of five-star customer reviews. For Patriots, survival food is not just for natural disasters. In today's world of uncertain supply chains and unpredictable emergencies, it's more important than ever to have a backup plan. Whether it's temporary power outage, a winter blizzard, rising food costs, you can rest easy knowing that you have a reliable source of food to see you through. And right now, you can go to 4 use code PAS to get 10% off your first purchase on anything in the store, including the emergency food supply kits that are designed to last up to 25 years. Just go to 4 use code PAS to get 10% off your first purchase of 4Patriots Survival Food. 
Welcome back, everyone. So before the break, I warned about the red flags that I'm seeing and, and that Republicans should be very worried. Before I get into that, I first want to take a quick look at the polls. Now, I understand the polls are simply a snapshot in time and we have a long way to go, but you can't pretend like they don't matter. Republicans love to complain about how the polls are off or they're biased, but they, they're ignoring the obvious by doing that. So the first poll I want to mention is President Biden's job approval rating. According to the Real Clear Politics average, as of this recording, the president's job approval rating is 41.2% approved, 53.7% of Americans disapprove of the job President Biden is doing. Now, that's insane to me. You know, President Biden, yeah, he's underwater with his approval ratings by over 12%. It, but it's crazy to me that 41.2% of the American public still approves of the job he is doing. By every single metric, every metric, our lives are more difficult today than they were just five years ago. Much more difficult. And understand that some of those who disapprove of the job he's doing, they disapprove because they believe he hasn't gone far enough to the left. So it's not like that entire 53.7% who disapprove would ever support a Republican candidate. It's astonishing. Then you look at the right track, wrong track numbers. Here, only 24.6% believe that the country is heading in the right direction under President Biden. That's according to the Real Clear Politics average. A whopping 64.6% believe the country is headed in the wrong direction. That's a 40-point spread. And I would love to know who the 11% are that have no opinion. Like, do they have their heads buried in the sand? I'll guarantee you they're a hell of a lot happier than people that do pay attention to politics, though. And I want to remind everyone, again, I have to say it. When you look at that 64.6% who disapprove of the direction of the country, some of those people disapprove because they believe that the president hasn't gone far left enough. I know, it's terrifying, right? When it comes to the economy. Only 38.1% of people approve of President Biden's handling of the economy. 58% of the people disapprove. On foreign policy, nearly 41% of the people approve and 54% of people disapprove of his handling of foreign policy. On immigration, 34.6% of people approve of his handling on immigration. 59% disapprove of his handling on immigration. When we look at inflation, 33.4% approve of his handling with uh, inflation, 62.6% disapprove. On crime, 35.7% approve of his handling of crime, 56.7% disapprove of his handling of crime. Now that one is a caveat because let's face it, the president does not get to dictate and control crime in local areas. That's the local politicians, the state politicians. And so really it's on them. However, we all know the, the whole agenda of the Democrat Party is to weaken our criminal justice system. Unless you're a conservative or Republican, then you could go to jail and be charged with legal theories that have never been tested in court before. But for everyone else, they, they want to diminish the criminal justice system. When we look at the president's handling of the war in Ukraine, 44% approve of the president's handling, 52% disapprove. When we look at the president's favorability ratings, 45% have a favorable view of the president. I don't know how. 53.5% have an unfavorable view of the president. When it comes to honesty and trustworthiness, only 37.6% believe he is honest and trustworthy. 50% believe he is a liar, which he is. It should be a lot more than that, especially given everything that we know today. So you look at the numbers, and with numbers that low on every issue, it, literally, almost every issue, his numbers are underwater. You have all this dissatisfaction out there. The 2024 election should be reminiscent of Reagan Carter, where President Reagan took a whopping 489 electoral votes and won the popular vote by a 10% margin. But that's not what we're seeing. And the question is why? Why aren't we seeing that? Every Republican should be alarmed. Because if you look at every poll, the only Republican candidate that beats President Biden is former President Trump. And even then, it's within the margin, right? The poll fluctuates. You know, maybe they're even one day. Maybe Trump's ahead by one or two points. Maybe Biden's ahead by one or two points. Now, I know it's early, and I'm not dismissing that. But these polls should be sending red flags up all over the place. You can tell yourself that the polls are biased against Republicans all you want, but if, if that's what you're going to go with, if that's what you're going to rely on, good luck with that. Because I could guarantee you, you will be very disappointed next year when the election comes around. 
You can't bury your heads in the sand and ignore this. You can't sit there and think that the polls are just off, that the polls are wrong. Republicans have a major problem. There are warning signs all over the place because this should not even be a race. It should not be a contentious race. Republicans should never forget what happened in the 2022 midterm elections. They all thought a red wave was coming, but in the end, it wasn't even a trickle. We barely took back the House. And I hate to break it to everyone out there, but despite all the failures of the Biden administration, despite all the failures of the Democrat Party, despite the radicalization of the Democrats, how radical and extremist they've become, the Democrats are winning and Republicans are dropping a ball. And I'm going to explain that when we get back from this quick break. PAS Report listeners, our government is out of control. Criminal tax hikes, hyperinflation, a full-blown recession, it's part of a grand plan. The billions of dollars Biden keeps sending to the corrupt government in Ukraine, the trillions in new taxes he wants to shove down your throat, the electronic banking system crash that resets everyone to zero, checking accounts, saving accounts, 401ks, IRAs, all of it, zero. But you don't have to be a victim. Protect your money and get up to $10,000 in free silver to do it when you call Gold Co. Gold Co's helped protect over $2 billion in gold and silver for people like you and me. They're offering you up to $10,000 in bonus silver when opening a qualified IRA account just for being a supporter of the PAS report. So whether you want to protect 50 grand or a half million or more, this is your opportunity to protect yourself from our out-of-control government. Don't be a victim and call Gold Code today. 855-656-0196. 855-656-0196. Or go to goldcode.com slash PAS report. Welcome back, everyone. And so the Democrats are winning, and there are two factors going on. The first fact is how Democrats are controlling the narrative and painting Republicans as these far-right crazy lunatics. The second factor is how they weaponized our institutions to pit Republicans against each other and create chaos in the Republican Party. So let's look at the narrative aspect first. When we look at the narrative aspect, you have the Democrats labeling Republicans as domestic enemies, domestic terrorists, as these far-right crazy extremists. They're banning books. They're they're raiding school board meetings. They're they're trying to uh, attack government institutions and that they are becoming radicalized extremists. Okay, here's the thing. What's so radical about upholding the Constitution? What's so radical about praising the constitutional republic? What's so radical about calling for limited government? Like, these are sensible positions. What's so radical about calling for fiscal responsibility? What's so radical about calling for an immigration process that actually works, a legal immigration pathway that actually makes sense at the same time of securing our border? Like, that's not radical. That's just common sense. You don't have to be a Republican or a conservative to know that. If you don't know that, you're an idiot. Sorry, but you are. And when it comes to the idea of banning books, well, no, it's not about banning books. It's about books in school libraries and what's appropriate for what age group. Sorry, we don't need to sexualize children in kindergarten through 12th grade. I mean, that's radical, right? I mean, that's extreme. And and so the Democrats are the extremists. Why aren't Republicans painting them as the extremists they are? When you want to castrate children, that's insane. That's something that no doctor should be performing a surgery. No parent should put their child through that. It really astounds me that we're going to say that if you are against, quote-unquote, gender-affirming care, that you're anti-trans, that you're some sort of extremist. Sorry, but if you're willing to give children growth hormones and put them through these life-altering surgeries, you're the extremist, not us. We're not the extremists. You're the extremists. If you're taking three, four, five, six, if you're taking children under the age of 18 to drag shows with men dressed up like women and scantily clad and and doing all, all these sexual acts in front of them, you're the extremist. You're the problem. Why are Republicans allowing Democrats to label Republicans as extremists? Why? They say that Republicans want to take your right away to abort your baby. No, it's extremist that you want to abort your baby in the ninth month of pregnancy. That's an extremist view. That you want taxpayer-funded abortions. That's an extremist view. Look at how extreme the Democrats have become. Remember, in the 1990s, they wanted abortion to be safe and rare. Now, it's abortion up and on demand. Abortion up until the day of childbirth. And they want you, the taxpayers, to fund it. Sorry, but that's an extreme position. When you have people calling for the dismantling of the Senate because they view the Senate 
as an undemocratic institution that's not a representative body, that's an extreme position. The Senate was never meant to be a representative body of the people. The Senate was always designed to do what's in the best interest of the states they represent. What's in the state's best interest may be different than what's in the individual's best interest. So it's an extremist view to sit there and say that you want to take away the Senate or make it a more representative body. It's an extremist view to sit there and say that you don't like the court. You despise the court because the court leans conservative. And so you either want to pack the court or actually dismantle the Supreme Court. That's an extremist view. Because you're not getting your way, you're willing to disrupt the entire system. You're willing to get rid of the checks and balances on the system. You have a a couple of college professors. One was a Harvard Law professor and one was a San Francisco University professor where they signed an open letter to the Biden administration telling the President of the United States to defy the Supreme Court's ruling in regards to race-based emissions and exercise what they deem as popular constitutionalism. Now, popular constitutionalism is a myth. It's made up. It's actually highly unconstitutional because what popular constitutionalism says, it, it wants to give the president the authority to apply their own constitutional interpretation to an issue. Now, placing judicial powers in the executive branch is a grave violation of the separation of powers and checks and balances. Madison warned about this in Federalist 47, where he says that all powers concentrated in the same hands or same branch of government may justly be pronounced as the very definition of tyranny. Yet those screaming about threats to democracy, that's exactly what they're advocating for. When we talk about censorship and the violations of our First Amendment, that's extremist. That's extremist. There's a lot of talk about COVID coming up again. Where, where, you know, cases are on the rise. You're so- seeing the fear mongering already exist out there. You actually have some places bringing back mass mandates. Uh, I know a college brought back mass mandates. A couple healthcare centers are bringing back mass mandates. And, and we're seeing it all over again, right? Now, how many will comply this time? I don't know. But the fact that anyone complies is completely ridiculous because we were lied and manipulated for years. They lied and manipulated what was going on. We now know, you know, Lord Fauci, science himself, the embodiment of science, even he has come out and admitted that cloth masks and surgical masks, they work at the margins at best, and they're not effective. And even though numerous studies have come out and have thoroughly disproved the idea of masks being effective, cloth and surgical masks being effective in any type of of virus, especially the coronavirus, you still have officials pushing this mantra. I'm sorry, it's extremists to actually mask kids up. It's extremists to mask them up six to eight hours a day. It's extremists to put masks on anyone at this point. That's extremists. And so where are the Republicans pushing that back against these narratives? You look at this administration, you look at the Democrats. And when President Trump was first elected in 2016 and took office in 2017, the headlines blared that he was going to start World War III, that he was going to use the Department of Justice in order to target his political opponents, that he was an authoritarian, he was a dictator, he was fascist, he was fascist. And yet, everything they accused him of doing, they are now doing themselves. And they're still accusing him. Well, if President Trump gets back into office, he's going to use the Department of Justice to target his political opponents, to target President Biden. And yet, that's exactly what this administration is doing. It's like the Twilight Zone. And to all the Republicans out there that despise the former president, I hate to break it to you, but you cannot win without Trump supporters. You will not win. And, and you may say that, well, then we're better off not winning. If it comes down to Trump, then we're better off. Well, that's a pox on your house. You see the damage that's being done to this country. You see the destruction that's being done to this country. And if you're willing to accept that, well, that's a pox on your house. And and then the Republican Party deserves to cease to exist. To all the MAGA Republicans out there, to all the Trump supporters out there, you can't win without establishment Republicans. This is why the Democrats are winning. Just look at it. You're doing exactly what they were hoping for. The divide and conquer strategy is not something that's new. In politics, it has existed since the beginning of recorded history, long before the United States. And it will continue to exist long after. And you're all too busy fighting amongst each other, rather than trying to win people over. And I want to remind all Republicans, regardless of whether you're a Trump supporter or not, no matter who you're supporting, you can't win a national election even with 100% Republican support. You can't do it. You have to bring in independents. You have to bring in disaffected Democrats. And I'll elaborate more on that in a minute. But listen, I understand that primaries are brutal. And I do suspect that most Republicans will support whoever the nominee is. They will come home. But this primary is different. 
because of how the Biden administration has weaponized the Department of Justice. When someone is running for president of the United States, the campaign is their life. When someone's on a criminal trial, that, that criminal trial is their life. Now imagine running for president and having four criminal trials. And if you don't think it's political, well, then your head's buried in the sand. It's very political. These are political indictments. While they are criminal charges against the former president, these are political indictments. And, and you could see that it's intended to interfere with this election. You have Jack Smith calling for his uh, trial in Washington, D.C. to start about a week and a half before the Iowa caucus, the, the first in the nation caucus that's going to go on. You have Fannie Willis, the, the prosecutor down in Georgia, in Fulton County, Georgia. She's calling for the trial to begin on the day before Super Tuesday, where millions upon millions of Republicans are going to go be, and, and pick their candidate. And what it's designed to do, again, is to have Republicans fighting against each other, plant seeds of doubt in Republicans' mind on who to support. You may love President Trump, but you may hate the drama and say, you know what, I've had enough, I'm moving on. Or you may like the president's policies, but you're uncertain where the criminal trials are going to lead, where the indictments are going to lead, and so you just stay out of it. And it's meant to demoralize MAGA supporters. It's meant to keep the infighting going. And you look at the attacks. I mean, Republicans are attacking each other much harder than they're attacking a weaponized system, a weaponized corrupt Department of Justice. It truly is amazing that more Republicans don't speak out against this because they think that when they get in power, they'll be able to use it against Democrats. Well, you're not going to get into power. That's the point. And you're too dumb to see that. So when you look at the weaponization that's taking place, it's having a major impact. And then it's about independence, right? How are you going to win over independence if independents are disgusted with Republicans? I mean, again, you look at the 2022 midterm elections. In most midterm elections, the minority party wins the independent vote. In 2022, that did not happen. That's why Republicans didn't have a red wave. So when we look at the independent, well, there's no outreach going on. You're not trying to win them over. Where's the appeal? We're, we're good at the grievances, but where's the appeal? You know, what's the plan? You have to give voters something to vote for. It's not enough to give them something to vote against. Now, I, I complain all the time. I mean, obviously, if you listen to this podcast, you know that. At the beginning of this episode, I list all the failures of the Biden administration. But we also need a plan that appeals to everyday Americans, and the Republicans don't have one. I mean, can any of you, you know, I know Speaker McCarthy, he released the Republican plan in September of 2022. Can any of you tell me the name of that plan? And the answer is no, because you're not going to be able to recall. I can't even recall what the name of the plan is off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. That's how weak and, and, and uninspiring it was. So Republicans better wake up to what's going on. You know, every day I'm watching videos of people in struggling communities that have voted Democrat for decades where they're protesting because their lives are suffering. Stores are leaving, the migrants are coming in, and they're going to these town halls with the politicians. They're holding press conferences saying, what about us? Why don't we as American citizens matter? Why are we the ones that have the burden placed on us where our communities are already struggling. They're already having problems. And one thing I never see is I never see a Republican representative, a GOP representative next to these people saying, we stand with you, saying, hey, if you give us a chance, we'll help you. We'll fight for you. Where is the GOP apparatus? The GOP apparatus is the most pathetic that I have ever witnessed. The most pathetic. Oh, well, we can't, time and money is precious and we can't waste our time, money and resources in communities that we're not going to win. We have to pour the money and time into the more competitive districts. No, go into the districts you long ignored. Start peeling people off. You start getting 5, 10, 15% in those communities, you win the elections. That's how dumb Republicans are. See, Republicans, they like to speak to people that already agree with them. They like to speak to the echo chambers. But that's not going to win you votes. Republicans are already motivated. They dislike Biden. Okay, yes, you need to make sure that they get to the polls and cast their ballot or, or do mail and ballot, whatever's going on. But the reality is that if you only speak to the echo chamber, then the Republican Party is doomed. And if the Republican Party keeps it up, I, I don't see much success for them. So it's still early. We could still turn this around. And there's a lot of barriers and obstacles that Republicans are going to have to overcome. But it is doable to turn this into a Reagan-Carter election. Unfortunately, Republicans' worst enemies are themselves. And, and that's the sad reality. Now, if you found this episode informative, 
Give the podcast a five-star rating on any platform that allows it. Take 30 seconds to write a review. Share this episode with your family and friends and on social media. And make sure to tune in Monday. I got a great guest coming in. So I want to thank you for joining me. And I'll be back on Monday with another great episode of the PAS Report Podcast. Thank you for listening to the PAS Report Weekly Roundup Podcast. Podcast. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Be sure to rate, share, and subscribe to the podcast so you'll never miss an episode. Also, visit PASReport.com and follow us on Twitter at PASReport. 